Welcome to Plan With Me for June. I am so, so excited about this kit. And I think I say that every month. <laughs> Welcome, it's Barbara from Vienna, Austria. This style might look very familiar to you, especially if you've seen my journey that I've been on since the Keeper of Memories workshop hosted by Alex Castro Ferreira, where I made this book. So this was an in-person workshop. Alex also has an online version, which I will be happy to link for you below. And in this workshop, I made this book. I will also link my videos about this workshop for you below. So you can see a little bit more about the workshop and things that I experienced there. So this style is so inspiring to me and I have taken so much away from this workshop for my current art. So I also wanted to bring that into my digitals. So as you can see, this is very much the style of the Keeper of Memories book. And I would like to again say a huge, huge thank you to Alex because her course has just catapulted me into another dimension in my art and I will be forever grateful. So what I did to create these digitals is I took photos of parts of my journal. So for example, these fabric pieces this right here, this here, this here. All of these are fragments of my book. Then I've taken photos of other elements that I had. For example, these dried hydrangea flowers or this piece of fabric or these here, this as well. And this one here as well is a little cluster that I have. I also photographed things like these vintage letters this one here as well. And then I've combined these with digital elements that I already had as digitals. For example, these dried flowers, these postcards. Then there's this savings book here that I have as a digital in my shop. Here, there's another page of it and so on. And then I also took these photos which are taken from other digitals where I have just the photo and I put it all together to make this kit. I am so happy with it and I really hope you will enjoy it as much as I do. So let me first show you the digital version of the background papers, the calendar pages with no dates and the ephemera pages. Usually what I do next is I show you the previous month. So that would be May, which we're still in. And to show you all the things I've done there, which is a bit tricky this time because <laughs> I've done a few things in here that you won't see until my vlog, which is exactly in a week from now. So you'll kind of see sneak peeks, but I don't want to say too much because I obviously don't want to take away from that vlog. You can find a playlist below this video where you can also see how I made this planner from a paper grocery bag. So let me show you what I have for May. So I think all of this we've done together. This is a video that which is also coming up on Sunday. So I don't want to say too much about this. We'll be creating a vintage envelope with a really cool seal on top. I'm not going to show it now. 
there has to be some mystery left right then these are two separate videos in my junk journal snacks playlist which i will also list below for you these are both my grandmother at different ages super fun this is the week where we are right now when i'm filming this and i added some of these ephemera pieces using my collaged master board i will link this video for you below as well so you can see how i made this in case you want to make your own i also have digital versions of these in case you don't want to make your own and i added some lettering here and i've used this die set from Sizzix and tim holtz the number is six six five nine two four i will link this for you below it has the alphabet in two different sizes and the numbers as well so i'll keep my to-do list in here you will hear about this next week in my vlog same thing here so here again is a to-do list with, which is still empty all of these pieces here are from that video with the cool collage masterboard. Again, this photo will be revealed in the vlog. Here I added another strip of the collage masterboard and added the negative of this here. Again, this will be my to-do list here. This again was made in that video with the collage master board and in here I have some photos which again will come in the vlog. But there's one more thing I want to add here which is this adorable fox. How cute is he? He was created by my dear friend Maureen. Hi sweetie, thank you again so much for letting me use him in my planner. And Maureen created him using Adobe Firefly which is an AI tool. This is still the better version. And in case you have not heard about all these amazing AI tools which have been coming on the market, maybe that's something you want to research because it is absolutely incredible and he is so, so cute. I added a bit of journaling on the back about my thoughts about AI. In truth, I think if you are on social media, I think you're gonna have to get on board sooner or later because otherwise I think you will be left behind. This doesn't mean that we have to start creating our images using AI, but AI has so many tools already that can help us in creating videos, in finding ideas, in writing the scripts and everything. Everything is in infant shoes right now, but of course, the more people use it, the more the AI is going to learn and the more useful it's going to be for creators. So this is a super fascinating topic and this little fox here is going to be the symbol for me to do my best to stay on top of the developments that are useful for me and hopefully can save me a lot of time in the future, even in editing videos. So that's something I'm really looking forward to and I'm doing my best to embrace instead of just backing away, being afraid of it and thinking AI is going to take everything and we're all going to lose our jobs. No, I think we need to embrace it and learn how to work with it instead of against it. I think that's the way to success. But that's my personal opinion. So this cutie can go into a pocket and I think... This one here, yeah, that one's still empty, so he can go in there. Bye-bye, little fox. So now let me show you how the planner pages look for my June signature. So this is signature number two in my planner. Here I had May. This is June. I love how chunky May has become in the meantime, and I'm not done yet. And then we have two more signatures for July and August. So, so that means I will have three of these planner books for 2023, all having four signatures. So again, I added the June here. I actually realized I had forgotten it for May. So I added May here with the year since it's the first signature. I want to make sure that I know immediately what year I'm in when I'm looking back at this in a few years. So this is my cover page. I might add something else to it. I might not. I love it just the way it is. Then this is my overview, just using some stamps to put in the dates. Then I have a white paper bag here, 
this will be my 10k step tracker hopefully it will be filled up here <laughs> these are still empty and this is my first week starting with june 5th because i have this page here from may going till sunday june 4th so I just hand stamped this with a date stamp. So these here are my pages where I will add my to-dos. That's the second week. This is the third week. And this is the fourth week going until July 2nd and the second half of the paper bag. And then I have one empty page here. And back here, I have this pocket and I made this flap for it in the video from my junk journal snacks episode from I think last Sunday. So this is super practical now. I don't have to worry about my ephemera falling out. I love it so much. I have a whole bunch of ephemera in here. So I'm going to take out the one from this month. This feels so nice with the fabric. So as you can see, I have already cut out all my ephemera pieces and also inked up the edges with walnut stain. I have printed these on, on matte photo paper. So these are the four journaling cards. Then we have the four large tags. And then we have two large envelopes, which I've also already folded and inked up, but I have not glued them yet. And there is a reason for that. So I want to start off with these two envelopes. Let's move all of this aside. Oh, and of course there's these three strips here. I printed these on 200 GSM cardstock because I will probably be using these as belly bands. I also have not inked these up yet because I don't know yet what size I'm going to cut them to. So before I inked up the edges, I punched out a half oval with this one and three quarters oval punch. Usually I use a circle punch, but I also like this shape of the oval. And let me show you what my thoughts are on how to add these. So I want to put this one, for example, on this avocado dyed page. And my plan is to make this into a belly band, meaning I will glue it down here and here so I don't have to worry about the back side. And I want to use this as a tuck spot. So I will leave this flap, but I will cut away this one and then just glue this down here and that can be a tuck spot. I also want to first think about the closure before I glue this down because I want a twine around it to then just tie in front here. So I need to attach the twine from the back before I glue it on. And of course, I don't want to have this white. So for this one, I want to add some vintage scrap papers to decorate the part here that we're going to see when we open it. I'm very lucky because I have a lot of vintage original documents that I can use. If you don't have original scraps, you're welcome to check out the links below for my digital documents, which are in German. I'm going to use my Liquitex matte gel for gluing everything down. You can use whatever glue you feel comfortable with. So I'm simply going to add these kind of like a patchwork. And I would like to give a huge shout out to dear Nicole from Nature Spirit Journals. Her channel is in German. So if you understand German, please check out Nicole's version of a junk journal planner. She has recently made one in a, I think, three-part series, and it's absolutely gorgeous. Nicole used a vintage book and made a beautiful cover with a tin on top in which she added a gorgeous collage. 
So you can find lots of inspiration. And even if you don't speak German, you can watch what she's doing and find lots of inspiration. Using the matte gel with a brush like this is really the quickest way to collage. I can highly recommend it. And if you're not sure what glue to use for what in your junk journals, please see the link below for my video all about glue and my favorite glues and why I use what for what application showing you lots of examples so let's check if this is far enough uh nope not quite that's going to be enough so once this is dry i can turn this around and cut off all the excess by the way in case i forgot to mention i'm obviously linking nicole's series making her junk journal planner down below for you there's something so satisfying about cutting away excess paper do you know this feeling <laughs> it's the little pleasures isn't it then i can go ahead and refold this i'll use my little iron to crease it well I love this thing. <laughs> then I can cut away this flap here on the top. And then I can ink up the inside here. Then I can glue down this flap. And now we have a tuck spot. So then we need some twine. So that will go underneath here. I think best would be to tape it on since I'm not gluing the whole surface down. That way also whatever I put in will not get caught. Let's just check how long it needs to be. So let's make a bow so it stays in place. And then I'll just use a regular piece of tape. I could also use masking tape. Actually, I want it this way. And then I'll use my thicker PVA glue to glue this down because I want this to really hold well. And then I also want to add something a little bit more tactile on this envelope to get some more texture. And I chose some of these fabrics and cheesecloth. So let's cut some scraps. I'll add it up here because there's like an empty spot right there. And I'm just going to stitch through this so that I have some of the same thread that I have here showing here, which will give us a nice contrast like this. And then I can glue that down with my PVA glue. I'm not going to bother to take out my textile glue for this little scrap. And I'll add one more piece of lace on top. And why not add two little buttons and some more black thread for contrast. So now we have an envelope belly band. We can stick something in here and we can open this up. And we have a tuck spot here. So now the second envelope, I want to add to the middle of my signature here. And for this one, I want to be able to write inside, but I don't want the white surface. So I'm going to cover this up with a coffee dyed paper. 
actually I'll use this side because it's lighter and easier to write on. And again, I won't need these two flaps, so I'll cut those off first. Again, I'm going to use my matte gel for this. Glue stick would also work. And I'm just going to cover the whole surface. And I'm going to work quickly because this dries quite quickly. And then I'll glue this onto my paper. And cut around it. I can use the same punch to punch the oval here. That will work better if the glue is dry. But of course, I am so impatient. Okay, and then I'll re-ink. Oh, there's some creases here and some air bubbles. No, we don't want that. Oh no! <laughs> It. Barbara, what are you doing? <laughs> it will all be okay. We'll just pull that right back. You won't tell anyone about this and it will be fine. I do need to be more careful with this iron. <laughs> so I'll ink up all the edges. Then I will gently refold my folds. And since I've inked here, it's quite easy to find the correct location. I'm going to be gentle because this is not dry yet. Don't want any more tears. And let's fold this down. Oh, I did not ink that, but yeah, this is where it should go. I should ink that as well. Gently, gently. Okay, so let's add this to our signature. And this time I just want it to be in the signature like this. Obviously, if I would have had this before I made my signature, I would just have sewn it in the middle here. But since I can't do that, I'm going to attach it with tape. You could either just use masking tape but I have so much washi tape that I need to use. So I'm going to do that. So let's choose one together. So this is my drawer of washi tapes. This is all the tape I have, nothing else hidden anywhere. <laughs> and I've curated this collection over the years and I'm very happy with how it looks now, but now I hardly ever use them. So that's really a bummer. I need to use these. So I want to pick a neutral one that's going to fit to my envelope and to my coffee dyed paper. This might be a really good choice. I like that one a lot. There's of course also some lovely Tim Holtz washies. I like this one here. Well, that would be perfect here as well. I should stop looking because otherwise the choice is going to get more difficult. So let's choose one of these two. I don't remember where this one is from. I had a little booklet where I put all of the washies that I purchased and I just put samples in it and wrote down the name and from which shop I got it, but I can't find that booklet. So my apologies. Okay, what do we use? We could of course use, yeah, let's just use one on one side and the other on the other side. And this is of course where a glue stick really comes in handy because we want this to hold over time. Washi tape is not permanent. So we need to add some glue to it. And I think the easiest way to do that is just place it on top and hold it down and just pull it over your stick like this. So let's make sure this is centered and then add our tape. Let's add this one here. OK, 
Okay, so now we have this fun envelope here and we can add some journaling inside. We could also, of course, stick some memorabilia inside and some journaling. I also want this to be able to close because I don't like these loose flaps here. So I have this printout left from one of my background papers, actually from one of my calendar pages. And I'm thinking I could cut this part out and make a closure out of that. So first I'm going to roughly cut this. And since it's printed on matte photo paper, it's very flimsy. So I'm going to first adhere that onto some cardstock. Then I'll cut around this piece. I'll ink around it. This will also add a little more interest here because this is quite plain. So if we add this on top like that, and we can just make a slit here. Let's mark that with a pencil. So I actually just need this very end to go in. So I'll make a slit here and here. I'll add my craft mat underneath so I don't cut through to the other side. And then I'll take my ruler and my craft knife and just make that slit. I want to ink that up a little bit as well. So now if we add this, we can just stick that in here and that will close. But I want to add some more fabric underneath here as well for, the, for some more texture. How about this one? And some cheesecloth as well. So let's just glue them down. So there's our second envelope. Oops, there's some glue. Oh, and I just see now this is a no-go. We need to do something with that. Would have been a lot easier if I would have thought of that before I glued it down. <laughs> But here we are. So I want this pattern right here. So I'll just turn it around and trace that. And then I'm going to try to get this curve of the envelope. Okay, let's glue it down. There's usually a solution, but sometimes they come a little harder than if you would have thought it through from the beginning. Story of my life. <laughs> okay, let's ink that up as well. All set. So I love both envelopes. And the rest of my ephemera will, will take a rest in my pocket until I am ready to play with it. I really hope you enjoy this kit, have fun with it. And feel free to tag me on social media in case you want to share what you've created. Love you guys. Mwah, mwah. Top it off.